hell yeah! Welcome to a new episode of Stop Crying Poser, the greatest podcast on Earth and in space. Welcome to the first podcast of the year. New year, new me. New year, new you, new us, new goals. Who's getting skinny? Show of hands. TJ, the little big turtle, butt spot Robert R, 87 meatball, Jake Cowsley, Guy just Sharky, Jeannie, Jake Gunther, Robert, Princess Schlill, Bad Sled, Sherry Bowberry, Willow Petra, and more. Welcome. I'm glad to have you guys here. I'm glad I'm here, right? I survived New Year's. I didn't break too many rules, right? I hope you guys didn't drink and drive because that's severely frowned upon in this establishment. You guys remember that commercial where the baby's like, it's frowned upon in this establishment. I don't know what commercial that was, but every time I say that, that's what it makes me think of. We have some pretty cool news stories today as well as some pretty cool topics that I thought up just right now. I thought them up right now. didn't even have any planning at all because I like to run my podcast The same way I like to play beer pong. Just close your eyes by the seat of your pants. No practicing. No preparation. No stretching. Just boom. Go. Win. Give me the money. And uh, I don't know. I'm pretty excited for a fun podcast today. I'm not hungover at all. I didn't drink much at all last night. Just one good old-fashioned 211. Got me going playing video games. And got a good night's sleep. Took a nap yesterday, which gave me even more time to sleep. And... I feel like for once I'm fully prepared, or at least somewhat prepared. So let's start this article. This article? Fuck! Let's start this podcast with articles. Jesus Christ, this guy can't even do a podcast by himself. Jesus. DUI suspect identified after Las Vegas officer injured in crash. Now this is one of those things where I feel like bad luck for some people can just become like a magnet. I think I read about this story earlier. Hopefully I'm not confusing this with something else i think this guy was drunk and then he crashed into a cop and it's one of those things where it's like i feel like i used to do this when i very first started driving and sometimes i do it now where like i'll see something in the road and i'll say to myself oh fuck better watch out for that and then i'll i'll feel myself slowly turning into it i'm like whoa idiot like i literally just told my brain not to drive over like not to drive to that shit and you start driving it I don't get it. It used to happen on U-turns too, where I'd be like, oh, fuck, I'm going to make a U-turn. I better not hit this median. Bump, bump. <laughs> so I would imagine that's what this guy was doing. He was drunk and shit, and he was like, oh, fuck, the coppers, the 5-0. I don't want them to put me in the paddy wagon and lock me away. I better not crash my drunk ass self into a cop. Oh, wait. <laughs> Bow. Except he's Asian, so <laughs> he was like, oh, I hope I don't crash into a dog officer and bring my family great dishonor (laughs) it's funny to me okay if they can do that shit on the office i'm allowed to do it on my goddamn podcast the article reads a suspected dui driver appeared in court thursday after police said he hit an officer in the early hours of new year's day jonathan kim 27 was charged with DUI resulting in substantial bodily harm. He hit a fucking he hit a motorcycle and destroyed it. Holy shit. What streets was this on? The collision happened just before 3:30 a.m. on Paradise and East Twain Flamingo area. Okay, so this is probably eh, not the greatest neighborhood, whatever. Definitely not a place you want to be driving drunk <laughs> hitting police officers or whatever. Harambe! Captain Nick Faris with Metro's Traffic Bureau said a traffic officer and a patrol officer were investigating a collision that involved a suspected impaired driver. While the officers were finishing their investigation, a second impaired driver, Kim, drove into the scene and rear-ended a police motorcycle. Now, the thing about when people are pulled over is usually there's like nothing but flashing lights then again in kim's defense this could happen it happens to me all the time you're driving near someone who's pulled over and i don't know why this became a thing police like to blind you while they're checking your information so they'll be running your id but they want to make sure that you're as blind as possible so they'll be shining some 9,000 led light at you 
while you're getting pulled over, just so that when they come back, you can't fucking see. You know what? I feel like this is, it's probably so it can make you look drunk. Like, you come back and they're like, why are your eyes watering, sir? And you're like, oh, you just shined a fucking, a giant lightsaber into my cornea, and uh, I'm having trouble seeing right now. And they go, oh, well, step about the car, asshole. And then you know what? Jonathan Kim comes and saves the day, crashes right in that fucking asshole cop. Um, but anyways, what I was saying was maybe the cops there were shining their lights so hard on the first suspect that maybe Jonathan just couldn't see. I don't know. Jonathan, this is Asian John. What if it's Asian John? I got to call him. I haven't talked to him since New Year's. Hope everything's okay. Jesus Christ. The motorcycle collided into the patrol officer and damaged the patrol car. The injured officer was taken to the hospital for a leg injury. The officer was expected to be okay. Now, a leg injury. When it said leg injury and car accident, I immediately think broken leg. And then I read something like this. The officer was expected to be okay. And it's like, okay, he'll probably live. But is he ever going to be okay? If you break your leg, what if he's a championship dance dance revolution connoisseur? What if he's a skateboarder or a rollerblader or even worse, a scooter rider? Ah, if he's a scooter rider, he'll be fine. You don't need skills or legs to be good at that. But if he does anything like long distance running or shit, being a police officer is pretty fucking tough, right? This is gonna, is he really gonna be okay? I guess, you know what? Maybe that's why they say that. The officer's expected to be okay. It doesn't say the officer's expected to be great, better than ever. Ah, maybe I maybe I misread that. The officer was expected to be pretty decent. He's going to be all right. The second officer involved in the crash was uninjured, police said. The suspect was taken into custody and was arrested for impaired driving. Wow. I mean, <laughs> it sucks for that guy, right? Oh, officer, I'm sorry. I the bright right you are shining into my face. Uh <laughs> Cause me to not be able to see so good. <laughs> oh shit. Um. Yeah. So that happened. Uh. Don't drink and drive. Right. This happened. What day was this? I think it was New Year's Day. So what the fuck are you doing? New Year's Day. You're out drinking too much. All they do, all day long here in Las Vegas, and I would assume everywhere in the United States, and maybe everywhere in the world, is they say, hey. We're going to be out there. If you drink and drive, we're probably going to fucking catch you. So don't do it here. And this guy went above and beyond. He was like, oh, yeah? You think you're going to catch me? How about I catch you and then get myself caught? Boom. Crash into a cop. What are you, you going to do? Next article. <laughs> oh, bitch. Woman arrested. <laughs> Woman arrested after violently attacking parents. For not taking her to Outback Steakhouse. Now, I have a feeling that I'm going to read this and I might take her side on this. Because it's New Year's. It's the holidays. What's going to fill you up more than Outback Steakhouse? It's also affordable. You can get a pretty nice steak. Not a great one, but a pretty good steak. You can enjoy it. They got, what, ribeyes, New York steaks. They got the garlic butter. You could go, how would how do you guys get your steak? I always see when I'm with Lily, she makes me get it medium rare. But if I'm just with my my dogs, I get it medium. And I used to my friend Eddie. I was gonna say I used to work with a guy, but I didn't ever work with him. I guess I did do some moving jobs with him. But my friend Eddie used to work at a really really nice high end restaurant. It wasn't a steakhouse, but they had a lot of steak options. And what they would do is uh, whenever someone ordered a well done steak. He said the head chef would just not, would not season it. And he was like, he was like, he kind of told me what the chef said. He's like, yeah, dude, if they don't want to fucking taste the steak at all, then why am I going to waste seasoning on it? And I thought that was kind of uh, a funny thing. I, I would imagine that that probably happens more often than we hear about. What do we got in here? Outback is pretty great for what it is. Dingo orders it super rare. Gage goes medium. Bad Sled goes medium. Here's my thing. I'd be down to go medium rare on my own account if I was at somewhere that was like a really nice steakhouse or at least one step above Outback because I know a lot of people that have worked at Outback. A lot of them. And some of them are really awesome dudes, but very few of them have any knowledge of cooking really. So you can just go in there, kind of learn how to flip a steak over a couple times and bam, you're a fucking Outback chef. 
Now, I might be being wrong. Maybe the people I know, maybe that was just a random occurrence, and maybe the rest of the Outbacks are filled with five-star chefs. But for the Outbacks I've gone to, I know my friend Mevin worked at one, and uh, they ran a pretty loose ship over there. And also, Outback is such a big chain that I sometimes wonder, right? Even when it comes to something like Chick-fil-A, we now have a Chick-fil-A here on my side of town. Whenever a chain gets to a certain size, you know you're not getting fresh. You know you're not getting really fresh meat because they have to they have to get it from somewhere. There has to be one central hub, right? They're not going to the butcher shop every day and getting fresh chicken. No, it's getting driven from point A to point B wherever Chick-fil-A originated and and you wonder. So same thing with Outback. There's so many fucking Outbacks everywhere. How am I supposed to be confident that I'm getting a really, really nice quality steak that was inspected with somebody's real eyeballs going, oh yeah, I'll take that one, that one, and that one. Uh, I don't really want that one. I don't want to serve that in my restaurant. And I'll take these three and uh, have, uh, deliver them by 2 p.m. You know what I mean? So that's just me, whatever. We, we're off on a little tangent here. But uh, let's see. Deanna Seltzer, 28, was arrested after police say she attacked her parents. Because they refused to take her to Outback Steakhouse. Now, here's one of those things, man. A lot of people out there aren't playing, right? We've seen it in movies. Some people out there, not, they're not playing with your ass, okay? Some people want to go to Outback, and they're about to fucking get down over it. Not playing with your ass. Parents need to fucking, they need to figure it out. The difference between, like, which bluff to call. Okay, a Florida woman. Florida, wow. What a fucking... What? what? Weird things happen in Florida? What? What? A Florida woman has been arrested for attacking her parents because they refused to take her to an Outback Steakhouse. This is in Florida. So there's Outbacks in Florida and there's Outbacks in California. There's Outbacks across the entire country. So I'm supposed to believe that someone handpicked out my steak? Get the fuck out of here. Skating weapon says that that girl needed her meat. <laughs> she is charged with one count of simple battery domestic, one count of battery of a person 65 or older, and two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Battery of a person 65 or older is a a crime of its own? Isn't that ageism? Doesn't that show f favoritism to old people? I guess. I guess you know what this day and age, think about being old. Being old a thousand years ago, like, there's no, there was no such thing as a person 65 or older. Everyone probably just died of AIDS. So, you think about now, being 65 or older, you should be afforded the luxuries of life. half price pancakes at IHOP. Things of that nature. Special fucking crimes just for you. Battery of a person 65 or older. Police responded to the home Wednesday night <clears throat> for reports of an armed... Domestic disturbance. Armed? Oh, shit. Police told WPBF. WPBF. Whistle paw ball fuck. That inside the house, officers found a 12-inch decorative dildo. I mean, knife on the kitchen counter. And a glass butt dining room table turned over with broken glass shattered throughout the anus area. What am I thinking about? Seltzer's mother told police that her daughter asked to go to Outback Steakhouse, and she told her no. And then Seltzer said, But, ma'am, I want to go to Outback Steakhouse. No. But, ma'am. Seltzer then allegedly became angry and began punching her mother. Seltzer's father intervened, and Seltzer allegedly also attacked him. Repeating multiple times, respect my daughter, <laughs> leaving him with multiple scratches on his face and upper body. <laughs> you guys like where this is going, man? This is why I'm the greatest entertainer. This is why this is the greatest podcast known to men. This is uh, this is what you guys deserve. This is the entertainment that you guys deserve. The father was able to wrestle the knife away from Setzler. What? You're trying to tell me that you're going to put a knife to me? What? Kicked in the ball, Stone Cold Stunner right there, dead and gone. According to CW34, Setzler is out of jail on bond. A judge ordered her to not be allowed to eat <laughs> Outback Steakhouse for three weeks to undergo a mental health evaluation upon her release 
from jail. She was also ordered to stay away from drugs, alcohol, and weapons. <laughs> like, <laughs> what kind of, it's like the judge said that? Hey, we're going to let you out of here, but I need, there's three things I can't have you messing around with. Stay away from drugs, stay away from alcohol, and stay away from weapons. If a judge told me that, I'd be shit out of luck because, well, you know what, I'd be good on the drugs, but the alcohol and weapons, I'd be like, listen, your honor, I got shown two out of three, but uh, that's, that's all I got for you. It is unknown if mental health, drugs, or alcohol played a part in Settler's attack on her parents. I was going to take her side on this because I was assuming that maybe they had already planned to go to Outback and maybe they already planned it and then they changed plans and then here's the thing. You can't just change plans when somebody has already like accepted that they're going to Outback. Or it's anywhere, really. Like, if, even in and out Like, hey, we're going to go to in and out I do it to Lily all the time. I'll be like, yeah, we're going to Chick-fil-A. And she gets all excited, mentally prepared. She starts thinking about what she's going to order. She starts visualizing the chicken juices squishing as she takes a big bite. Cream filling, shoots all in her mouth. Glitter. And she gets all this hype going. And then we get there, and it's like a half-hour wait in the drive through And I say, fuck that. We're going to Chipotle. And then she goes... Oh, but Steve, but me, I wanted to get to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> it's because she wasn't mentally prepared for such a letdown. You know, we watched Halloween the other day, and you know what they say when you go to mental institutions? Don't rile up the patients, okay? So when you're really hungry, you're in a special mental state. You're in this real pr primitive, predatory state. Where you're going to eat something delicious. And when they take that away, you get mad. But that's not what happened here. What happened here is classic entitlement of a bitch who's down to throw down. Okay? She thought she deserved Outback. Bitch, why didn't you go get Outback yourself? You got Uber. Go get a job. A J-O-B. A jack-off boy. Go out there. Make some money. Then get out there. And then you can buy your own Outback Steakhouse. But until then, stay off the drugs. Stay away from the alcohol and no weapons. I think this was a, a good story. This looks like a crazy bitch, too. It's one of those chicks that you have no idea what age she is. Pear-shaped bitch-ass head. Nobody knows what's going on in her mind. I wouldn't trust her. As far as I can throw her. In the words of the wise SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, yeah, I don't know, dude. I remember when I was a kid... Uh, my mom told me we would go to mini golf, and I was like, I really want to go to mini golf. I'm so excited. I'm waiting all week. Like, can't wait to go to mini golf. Can't wait to go to mini golf. Mini golf, mini. You know how kids are. Mini golf, mini golf. You do a little dance. About to do mini golf. About to do a mini golf. About to go mini golf. About to do mini golf. Oh, they got batting cages too. Oh, they got batting cages too. Maybe I'll get pizza. Maybe play skee ball. It's gonna be the greatest day of my life. And then uh, it rained that day. And she's like, we can't go. It's raining. And I was like, what? We could still, we still go. I could, I could. I can play mini golf in the rain. And she's like, no, we can't go. And I threw a big old fucking tantrum. Big man, I want you to hit the mini button and get the hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I hope, I hope this South Park shit stays going. I hope we always, hope from now on, every Stop Crying Poser has at least one Cartman fucking noise. Police identify suspect after Valley manicurist run over and killed by vehicle. This one's written by Leisha Ruffin. Leisha Ruffin. Was that a member of one of the Temptations? <laughs> okay. This. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> I don't know. This doesn't look like a person who would kill somebody over manicure. This looks like a person who would just go and pay for their manicure. You look normal for the most part. Other than this is a mugshot. Metro Police released prior mugshot. I wonder what she did before. Probably another manicure bullshit. Oh, sweet buck. Uh, Las Vegas. Police identified a woman Thursday wanted for running over and killing a valley manicurist after skipping the bill at a nail salon. So basically, she got her nails done, her feet done. I always forget which one's Mandy and which one's Petty. One's your hands and one's your feet. It's where this Asian lady just goes and they grind down your feet and they put these like things between your toes and wash your feet all good. They used to do it to Jesus all the time back in the good old days. Uh, Las Vegas Metro Police asked for the public's help in locating 21-year-old Crystal Whipple accused of fatally hitting and running over 
Nayu Annie Huen with her car after a dispute over a payment at a nail salon near Flamingo and Decatur. Now, Flamingo and Decatur, not a terrible neighborhood. Usually, this is the kind of thing that would happen in a terrible neighborhood. Flamingo and Decatur, not so bad. There's a skate park not too far away from there called Flamingo Park. Some people call it Kenny Gwynn, if you guys are interested. The incident happened 4.30 on December 29th, right before the holidays. Whipple tried paying for a $35 manicure, but her credit card was declined. Whipple reportedly told Wynn she would get another method of payment from her car. When she got to her rental car, police said Whipple instead attempted to drive away from the salon. In the new surveillance video released by police Thursday, Wynn and her partner are seen running out of the salon after the woman. Wynn is seen running in front of Whipple's vehicle before the suspect accelerates and runs over Wynn, dragging her 50 feet before escaping the parking lot. Okay, now let's. I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to give you guys one hint as to what I'm going to say. Methamphetamine. That's what I'm going to say. Nothing else. I can't think of anything else. Like, if you can't pay the 35 bucks, that's fine. You know they're going to get your license plates. You know your card was declined, so they have your name information already in the credit card, right? Because your card got declined. They already know your name, unless it was a stolen credit card. They already have your info, so when you think about it, they're going to run you over. Over this? Really? You already have all the information you need. Now, I've heard this a lot about Asian tourists. Asian tourists, especially downtown, are always in the way. They're always in the way. I don't know why. They're always stopping and looking at shit and going, a lot of ooh and ah, and not being aware of their surroundings. And I don't think that applies here totally, but I feel like this chick thought, if I run in front of this car, I'm going to not get run over, right? Obviously, like, what the fuck am I saying? Of course. But she probably thought, if I run in front of this car, maybe we can get this handled. Maybe if I threaten this chick or, or try to scare this, this white woman, this white methamphetamine addicted woman, maybe I'll figure out a way to, to stop this from happening. Even though it's only $35, it still is going to be, it's obvious it's going to be better to not get run over. And I saw this the other day in a shooting video on Facebook. Somebody got shot. A security guard shot somebody in a car because uh, the car was pulling away as they were holding on. Here's my thing. If I'm ever in a situation with a car, and it took me a while to realize this, because I think I got my toe run over one time, and I felt like my foot was going to explode. You know, you never know how big and deadly a car is until you're underneath it getting fucked. And by then, it's probably too late. There's a lot of times where you'll go to push a car, and if it's, like, slightly uphill, you realize, wow, even with all my strength, I cannot beat this metal machine. I can't do it. And I feel like this this lady was probably just like, stop, 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 stop. You you have to pay. You have to pay. You have to pay. And then the methamphetamine bitch was just like, more meth. Meow. Credit card declined. Meow. I don't know. I want to know your guys' thoughts on this. I hate to make too many jokes about a really sad situation, especially this was two days before New Year's. This lady is working a nine-to-five job, right, based only off – um. What do you call it when you you don't get paid by the hour? You only get paid for comp composition. Com, com, what the fuck is that word? Cuck. God, put f screeching halt. We have to stop the podcast. Commission. Thank you, God, Jay Cowsley. Jesus Christ. I can't think sometimes. She probably just gets paid only on commission. A lot of these people who do like haircuts and manicures and shit, they have to actually pay rent to to be able to be at that place. And rent's probably not shit, probably, you know, a few dollars a day or whatever. But they have to pay rent to be there. So when somebody runs out, they literally lose money. Like, they don't they don't kind of lose money. I used to hear that about people who uh, dine and dash. I used to hear, there's no way that's true. Like, oh man, if you're at Denny's and someone dine and dashes, you have to pay for the meal. There's no way that that's true. I mean, if, if I'm wrong about that, somebody give me some proof, or maybe they've worked somewhere where that's how shit happened. But I really don't think that that's true. If someone dying and dashes, you still get paid for your, you know, your eight bucks an hour for working there, right? But when it comes to this lady, she's working a real fucking job where you don't get paid shit if someone dips out. So all she wanted to do was run out there and get the shit handled, and this crazy fucking bitch ran over for no fucking reason, dude. 
it's 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 sad and it's not fair it's not fair that things like that happen so if we can learn anything from this it would kind of just be like it, if you're in a situation like this you don't always have to be a hero when it comes to being against a car or a gun or outback steakhouse i just say don't be a hero just go with the flow get out the way right get out the way uh i used to always talk about this thing called verbal judo if you can uh if you can kind of deflect a situation and and you know use use that to get away from it, just kind of do that, you know. Especially this lady, maybe she didn't, maybe she wasn't thinking, maybe she was so hyped up and angry and so personally offended that this lady would steal thirty five actual dollars of of her income. She wanted to go out there and really like try to do something physically. But in a situation like this, just get out the way, get out the way. Everything will be fine. Really sad story. And uh, they have this chick's picture. They have her info. I hope you go to fucking jail forever. You fucking bitch. Oh, police source. Man shot and killed by Green Valley Ranch. Security had suicide note. I only wanted to read this because I wanted to read why, why security shot this guy. Oh, it's the casino. Okay, I didn't know it was a casino. I thought they were just at a place. I, I don't know. Let's read it. Officers responded 3.40 p.m., uh, blah, blah, blah. The shooting happened in the hotel lobby. Police said three security guards confronted the suspect. Two of the security guards were armed. A verbal exchange took place. It's reported that the man produced a handgun. Produced it. What, did he ate fucking... Remember Yoshi's Island where you, you, like, you eat a Goomba and then you press down and then you shit out an egg? Did he produce an egg? He produced a handgun. Said uh, Kirk Moore, blah, blah, blah. That's when security guards shot and killed the suspect. It's not clear how many shots were fired. Okay, this must have just happened. Like, I wonder why they don't tell you. Because it's definitely clear. They're definitely going to find out how many shots were fired. All you have to do is look on the ground and see, see how many shell casings are on the ground. You know? it's And you could, you could estimate, too. Uh, it looks like about three. Or it could be, it uh, looks like about 32. Like, you can know how many shots were fired, or just ask somebody nearby. Uh, yeah, I was playing, uh, roulette. Sounded like about 26 shots were fired. 26? Ah, uh, give or take two or three. Somewhere in the mid-20s. So, it's, when they say it's not clear, it's like, okay, great reporting work. Who is this? Who's reporting this, Gabriella? God damn it. De Silva. De Silva, okay. Look at this guy. This guy looks like, oh, an actor. I can't think of who it is, though. Oh, man. It's, it's gonna bug me. I don't care. A police source familiar with the investigation told Fox 5 the suspect had a suicide note, a gun with one bullet in the chamber and an empty magazine. We were running down the ramp out of the bar, and everyone was just kind of grabbing each other, saying, get out, get out, get out. Good movie, Get Out. If you guys haven't watched it, check it out. Cool twist ending. She was inside whatever. Police were originally called about shots fired. And despite conflicting reports, said there was not an active shooter. Guests said they were briefly told to exit the property, whatever. The man died on scene, so they had to have shot him a pretty fair amount of times. Uh, interview, whatever. Station casinos, huh? Nice. So there's a lot of casinos. It used to be where there was not a lot of guns in casinos. Nowadays, there's armed security in every fucking casino. It used to be like just the strip, and then if you went to like off the strip you'd be cool and downtown it was kind of like ah like very few armed guards downtown now it's everywhere everywhere there's an armed guard on top of that you're not allowed you're not allowed young man you're not allowed to have a gun in a casino i think there's very few exceptions if any maybe like you're a cop or a peace officer or or you work there of course but not allowed okay let's get dramatic here let's let's turn some heads new york city gender neutral birth certificates law to take effect. Now, oh my God, this we could. I'm gonna try to speed through this because I could literally talk about this for the entire podcast. New York City residents are about to have new option. New York, New York, Gabriella, goddamn it, are about to have new option. New York City residents are about to have new option for a new option or new options. Associated Press, goddamn it for denoting gender on their birth certificates, Gender X, a law allowing the choice of X takes effect Tuesday. So, <clears throat> it really is that simple, right? You really just choose. 
And it used to be you had to identify as something. So you'd have to grow up and identify it. Now, p parents just choose for you. It's just up, up in the air. No one knows. Oh, it allows people to change their birth certificates to X by attesting that it reflects their true gender identity. Parents can also choose X for newborns. Now, no one reads this and goes, mm, what? No one does that? I'm just going to choose this shit? I'm just going to, like, I don't know. I don't want to get too far into this. Like I said, New York City is joining California, Oregon, Washington State and allowing an undesignated gender option on both on, on birth certificates, excuse me. A similar provision takes effect for New Jersey. What is causing this and who is voting for this is my question. Like, I, I just don't get it. Like, who buys this shit? Who believes in this shit? Now, if you do believe in it, then it has to do with this thing. Like, yeah, uh, I grew up and I realized I, I didn't identify as man. Okay, then you're a chick. No, 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 no. <clears throat> I actually need to be more special than just man or woman. I'm not allowed to be a man or a woman. <clears throat> oh, no. I have to be something different from everyone else. Oh, yeah, no. Well, then go get good at an instrument or go uh, go become uh, really good at golf or sports or singing. or Just go get good at something if you want to stand out. No, 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 no. I, w I will not work hard to stand out. I will just complain until we change birth certificates. That's how I'm gonna stand out. Wait, wait a minute, you sure you don't wanna just go get get good at something or maybe be like a good good speaker or maybe run for office? If you, if you really want that much attention, there's a lot of things you can do. No, I will not work hard. I would rather just be something. I'd rather just be X because I feel like it. Uh, okay, you don't wanna go like become like a championship chef or maybe like a really good bowler or baseball player, or maybe win the spelling bee, or become a famous actor. No! Didn't you hear me? I don't want to work for anything to stand out. I want to just be standing out, based off some shit that I just feel one day. Uh, okay. What well, does that come with special treatment? Yes! Of course it does! Of course it comes with special treatment! I need everyone to refer to me in a special name! You can't just call me sir, or ma'am. You have to call me Zer or Zim. Um, wh why do I have to change, ma'am, ma sir, sir, Z Zim, Invader Zim? Why do I have to change? Why do I have to change my entire life based on your weird feeling? Because, because New York voted on it, young man. <laughs> I win again. Am I the only one who fucking like looks at it like that? I swear to God, that's how it plays in my head. It really just plays in my head. Now, yeah, Dingo says, I have nothing against real trans people, but pushing it on kids is evil, and giving kids hormone blockers is straight-up abuse. Dingo, that's a whole other topic, but I totally agree. If you want to be trans, that's fine. Go be trans. Um, in my opinion, like, it's, it's becoming like that when you get fat now, too. You know what I mean? We're getting fat, and instead of saying, hey, listen, uh, this is kind of like not really healthy for you, people go, no, we must respect the fat. Respect the fat, and you saying you saying that they could change is is totally impossible. And then that's how it used to be if, with the, the trans shit, you know what I mean? Or uh, my argument has always been like, you ever see people with anorexia? Like, it's not the greatest argument, I understand, so don't fucking take me out of context here. But when someone has anorexia, <clears throat> we try to help them. <clears throat> because when they look in the mirror, they don't see reality. When an anorexic person looks in the mirror, they see a, f a fat person. And that's like a mental thing. Like, oh, like, I thought I was fat. I didn't realize that I was just skin and bones. Because when they look in there, they see something different. And what we do is we try to help them. We try to, we try to get them to see reality, right? One way or another. Now, when it comes to a man who looks in the mirror and sees a woman... Rather than try to help them, we we just let it go. And, you know, I always hear this thing like, oh, trans people have a high suicide rate. Yeah, because we're not out there helping them. You, you can try to blame that on bullying, but guess what? Fucking everyone gets bullied. Fat kids get bullied too. Their suicide rate's probably nowhere near as high as trans people because we're not out there helping. We're just, we're just making it like we're just adding on to it. And now we're adding on to it so much that I have to change the way I speak. And now we have to change the way that we like... We do uh, driver's licenses and shit. 
We have to change everything based on this. It's just, it's just, it's, it's weird. And I'm not the most educated on the topic. And I do come off really strong, like, oh, like, fucking hate trans people, super anti-trans. I'm not that at all. But I do think that, I don't know, I think that there's a line of thinking nowadays that's <clears throat> not necessarily, like, like, the most logical, right? Now, if I was a kid, you know, I went through a lot of phases, too. I was a kid, and I used to skate at this park called Bunker, and I really wanted to get a Bunker tattoo. A fucking big-ass tattoo that just said Bunker Crew, or, or what was it, Bunker, I think it was Bunker Crew. Now, if I had Bunker Crew on my fucking body today, I would kill myself. Yeah, I'd kill myself. Yeah, I'd have a high rate of suicide because I made a huge fucking mistake when I was younger. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just, obviously these things, <laughs> I'm, I'm on a lot of different tangents and I'm comparing a lot of apples to oranges here, but it, it really just, it, it baffles me as to how this stuff gets legislation. You know, like, I think trans people should be allowed to have all the same rights as all of us. The right to vote, the right to free speech, the right to, you know, uh, say fucked up things and do fucked up things. And they should have their, all the rights that we have. But I don't think that they should be allowed to have more extra shit. Bonus shit. Okay? You're 65. You get bonus pancakes. That's fine. Yeah, you have some, some issue with your, with your body where you look in the mirror and you think you're a man but you're actually a woman. I don't think you should get extra privileges just because you're, you're, you think differently. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people who are going to watch this are going to disagree, and I would love to hear your thoughts because uh, I can always be educated. I can always learn a little bit more about this stuff, and again, it's something I don't really completely understand. So I, I think this is weird, and I think I've made my point pretty clear, <clears throat> but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Um, gotta love Moist says, did you see the UFC fighter who classified themselves as female? and proper smash the female's heads in. I think that's <clears throat> a big deal too. That happens a lot in uh, high school wrestling now. And I think a lot of people would say it's not fair. And I think a lot of people would say it's not fair because there is a clear difference between man and woman. And when men compete against women, it's, it's blatantly obvious, right? Now, if men and women were so interchangeable, these female wrestlers, like, they, these female wrestlers who were born men, they wouldn't be dominating 99% of the competition every single time if men and women were completely interchangeable, right? It, they would have, they would somehow like maybe look similar to their competitors. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Police employee. Okay, not, not police employee, excuse me. Employee kills robbery suspect in jewelry store shootout. This is going to be my last news topic, and then we're going to do the trivia question. <clears throat> so if you guys are just sticking around for trivia, get ready. Get your thinking caps on, goddammit. Police said a suspect... <laughs> I'm having a hard time breathing here, guys. Too much talking. Too much talking. Police said a suspect was killed, and an employee was injured after an attempted robbery turned into a shootout. At 5 p.m. Saturday, two suspects went into John Fish Jeweler, Jewelers. Uh, whatever. The suspects attempted to tie up a customer and multiple employees to conduct a robbery. An employee in the back room who had a gun came out and engaged with at least one suspect. Multiple rounds were exchanged between the employee and suspect. The employee was shot multiple times, but shot and killed one suspect during the exchange. The employee was taken to Sunrise Hospital in critical condition. Oh, I didn't, I didn't read this. During the shootout, the customer was also struck and was taken to Sunrise as well. The other suspect ran from the jewelry store. He was described as a black man wearing dark clothes and had not yet been identified. Well, obviously, he can't be a black man because he identifies as a white woman. So thanks for that news story. Spencer said the business is small and family owned and that the family was shaken up. Now... <clears throat> This is not the greatest example, but this is a good example of what we need to be putting on the news to make people not want to rob stores. In my opinion, in my opinion, if we read more stories about people committing crimes, you know, like violent crimes and then being killed, 
I think a lot of these, you know, angry teenagers would think twice about committing a violent crime. Like, oh man, let's go. Hey, did you hear that story about the jewelry store that got robbed? Yeah, I heard they got away with like 35,000. Only two of them got caught. One guy got away. Damn, that could be us, dude. Let's go. Versus, hey, did you hear about that jewelry store that got fucking robbed the other day? Yeah, one guy died. His family will never see him again. Wow. Man, maybe we shouldn't go do that. Let's go fucking skateboarding instead. Like, <laughs> I know I'm oversimplifying it, but I feel like if that happened more often, I don't know, I think, I think it would really cut shit down. And when I always see this, it happened a lot last year. There was a lot of home invasions happening on the west side. Not only home invasions, but where a kid would break into a house, steal like a TV, and then run away. That was happening a lot here. A lot. You know, like dozens and dozens of times. And two or three times. One of the times it happened right in Asian John's neighborhood. One of the times, a kid broke in and got killed. And of course, they interviewed the family saying, I can't believe that happened. They didn't have to kill him. They didn't have to kill him for breaking into their house and stealing their belongings. You know, they didn't have to kill him. And I, I must be thinking backwards because I'm. am I the only one who thinks... He didn't have to break into another person's home. Did he have to? He was forced. He was forced beyond all fucking, beyond all fucking free will. He had to break into a home. And that was just one home. Imagine how many other homes he broke into. Imagine how many people's lives are terrorized. Thinking that their home isn't safe. Thinking that their kids aren't safe in their own beds in their own home. Yeah. More people that do these home invasions and get killed. I don't think it's a happy story. But I think it does, I think if we go by butterfly effect, I think it probably works out pretty well. Like, oh, damn. Hey, did you hear about uh, James? Yeah, he's dead. He, he, he jumped into a house trying to fucking steal some shit, and it killed him. Oh, damn. Man, let's go play basketball. I don't want to end up like James. Sounds good, dude. That feels like, like that could be one of those old school G.I. Joe commercials. G.I. Joe. Oh, man. I just don't get it. It's weird to me. I think that that would definitely set a precedent versus how many times it doesn't happen. I'm not saying kill all home invaders. I'm not saying every time I make that argument, there's one guy in the crowd who goes, well, you think they deserve to die? And I say, no, I don't think they deserve to die. But I think the laws that we have in effect now should already, the laws that we have now should already deter criminals from doing things like that. And if the laws aren't going to deter them, you know, if, if these if these letters and words and jail time doesn't deter you from committing a crime, then what's the next step? Right? What's the next step? I don't know. But yeah, I'm sure a lot of us will agree to disagree on that too. Anyways, I don't want to get into a big gun debate right now in the chat, but we can definitely do that during the post show. Because we only have about five or ten more minutes left here. Um, trivia. Are you guys ready for trivia? Give me a hell yeah. The trivia question is this. If you live in the United States, you will get a free sticker pack delivered to your house. <clears throat> Do I have any stickers here to show you guys what they look like? Yes, right here. This is what they look like. God damn it. I have a picture right here. Why do I always do this? I've been doing this since the first podcast. I've been fucking holding this up when all I have to do is point right here. What an idiot. This is the sticker, though. Name four of Thrasher's Skaters of the Year from the past 10 years. Or 15 years, whatever. Name four Skater of the Years. Pretty simple question, right? Pretty simple to me. All you have to do is name four Skaters of the Years. Tony Hawk does not count because he was actually Skater of the Year in 1990. Let's start from 2000 and up. If you started the year 2000, name four. And if you get one wrong... Like, don't just name 10 skaters you really like. <clears throat> you got to name four that definitely were skater of the year. I have a list right in front of me. So I'm going to give you guys time to think about that. Tyshawn, Jamie, Ave, Wes. Wow, that was... Yeah, you, you, almost, you almost did it in order. Jake Gunther wins. Uh, Bad Sled is uh, second place. You guys both get sticker packs. I'm going to give you guys both a sticker pack. That's crazy. Jake almost got them in order. Kyle Walker, Jamie Foy, David, David, excuse me, Gonzalez, and Wes Kramer. Damn, you guys are good. 
<clears throat> uh, talk to me on Facebook. If you don't have a Facebook, talk to me on Instagram. Make sure you send me your address, and I will uh, I will hook you guys up. Big boy, big dog. So that was the trivia question. Uh, we only have a few minutes here, so I'm gonna try to rush through, um, rush through some of this stuff. How was my New Year's? Uh, me and Lille Fish Fillet went to uh, a bar nearby, very close. Didn't drive. Don't worry, I didn't fucking crash and hit a cop. Uh, they did a raffle. It was crazy. Everyone in the bar got a prize. Every single person in the bar got a prize just for being there. And it was free food. It was like baked ziti, shrimp uh, with shrimp cocktail sauce. It was this weird like uh, sausage and and like peppers and thing mix. And there was something else. What was it? It was like steak sandwiches. It was bomb. And I won a pretty nice bottle of scotch. <clears throat> a Dewar's 12-year bottle, which Dewar's is pretty cheap. You know, you probably get a Dewar's bottle for like 12 bucks. But this bottle, it's up there in like the $25 range, so I'm pretty hyped on that. I want to try it one of these days, but I'm not a big scotch drinker. I really tried to be. I tried to give scotch a chance a couple years ago. Now, I tried every different scotch, and I tried to really like wean my way in. I tried to acquire the taste, but uh, it's really not a, a, for me, in my opinion, it's not a drunk guy's drink. It's a, it's a, I want to watch a game and sip on a drink kind of drink. It's a sipping drink. It's not like a getting drunk kind of drink, unless you're sipping for a while. Or at least that's the way I look at it. <clears throat> so that happened there. Um, yesterday, I put out a video of me eating really spicy burrito. Me eating a really spicy burrito. I turned into Gabriella right there real quick. I put a video of me eating spicy burrito and was good eating the burrito. <clears throat> I didn't poop bad at all. As Varial Reality asks, my poop was fine, but I noticed in the comments, I should have known we had a couple of hot sauce cool guys, and I should already know that it's always people trolling, but for some reason, it it just it annoys me, right? I guess the, I, let, I let the troll win, but it annoys me when I get the hot sauce cool guys, because there was a handful of comments that were like, those hot sauces aren't even hot, and I'm just thinking to myself, like, these are literally, like, two of these five are the hottest hot sauces on the market right now that doesn't contain extract. They're literally the hottest things out. <laughs> and the comments are like, those hot sauces aren't shit. One of them was like, oh yeah, those are only hot if you're a white boy. And the other one was like, oh, that would be easy. It's nowhere near as hot as the hot sauces I have. And I'm just like, okay, fine, y you got me. Make a burrito and fucking film it then. Guess what? It's never gonna happen. And I've always, I feel like I lose to the trolls sometimes, but deep down I always win. Because even with skating, when people say, this trick sucks, anyone could do that trick, front blunt varial flip. All I do is write back, you got, a, you got a smartphone, don't you? Do it! Just fucking do it! I'll give you a week! I'll give you a week, and no one's ever done it! No one's ever pulled it off. And now with this, those hot sauces are weak, dude, I could do that easy. Do it! And no one will ever do it ever i had a video where i did a bunch of grinds on rails and i was going to give away a skateboard a fucking brand new skateboard everyone would love to have a skateboard especially if all you have to do is an easy trick guess how many people did it zero none no one could do the tricks <laughs> and it's like that with the hot sauces and i always feel like afterwards i win like i start off being annoyed but i always 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 win and by typing those comments at some point in your life, you must just have to wake up and go, damn, I've been spending my entire life as a loser. Because every time you type that and you don't back it up, it's a loss. And it's a loss and a loss. And you probably bury those deep inside your heart. And then one day you wake up and you go, I've been a fucking loser my whole life. What? I've been a loser? Me? I've been a loser? All I had to do was eat hot sauce and I was too scared? I, I've been a loser my whole life! Boom! <laughs> oh, I don't know. It annoys me. I wanted to hear about your guys' New Year's resolutions, but we don't have much time. So if you are watching on YouTube, I would love to hear your New Year's resolutions. I don't even bother making New Year's resolutions because either, one, I'm going to break them. Number two, I hate, like, New Year's resolutions are like that, like being a vegan or whatever. Like you have to tell everyone, oh, guess what? I'm, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Like, I would love to lose 10 pounds. But I feel like as soon as I fucking say it out loud, I jinx it. It's gone. Like if I announce my New Year's resolution, it's already over with. I used to love it. One of my uh, 
one of my Facebook posts from years ago. It said, uh, damn, New Year's coming up. I guess I'm about to start seeing posts about everybody getting skinny. And then I would always wait till like February. And right around February is when everyone decides they don't want to get skinny no more. And everyone's just like, you know what? Everyone's just got to accept me for me. I don't, I don't know why, like, I don't know why everyone has this image of, like, people that everyone should be like. Like, I'm just going to be me. That, that happens right around February. <laughs> I swear to God. Like, January is all about getting in shape and, oh, man, I got to get – it's not about getting in shape. It's about getting healthy and happy and, and getting healthy and, you know, like, living a happier and healthier life. That's what it's about for me. And if I lose a couple pounds, hey, that's fine too. And then guess what? February rolls around. Hey, dude, I don't know why all these standards are so high. Right? Like, what do, you, what do you mean? In the Greece, when Greece was around at the time of the Romans, they were a little big bone. No one complained then. So, I'm like, I'm not going to just change my life to everyone else's standard of what a human should be. All right? I think that's fucking sexist, racist, deplorable, in, in, in debatable, debatable, debacleable, and just, just disgust me that anyone would even want to better themselves because I, I I'm actually gonna get fatter and that's gonna actually better me to reinforce how much confidence I have in my shelf <laughs> uh, then the February depression yeah then all the fat chicks don't have Valentine's oh shots fires <laughs> holy shit um anyways guys I think that's gonna be it for the podcast today we are gonna do the post show I'm going to play a little bit of video games uh, for a while. Then I have to jump on editing. But I think we had a really good show today. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I missed out on a couple of topics I wanted to talk about. But I feel like we made up for it with uh, the news. I feel like we had a really good news section today filled with laughs. So I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on uh, crashing into a police car. Do you feel like sometimes when you don't want to do something, there's some weird magnet that just makes you want to crash into shit? Also, I want to hear uh, your opinions on <laughs> Outback Steakhouse. Is it worth? Is it worth it? Can you twerk it? Put it down and reverse it? What is that song? <laughs> is it worth fighting somebody? And <laughs> is Outback worth it? Uh, the manicure stories is really sad. I don't. I don't even want to think about that no more. Uh, don't start shit with nobody in the casino. Uh, I do want to hear your guys' thoughts on this gender shit because I know that I approached it a little bit abrasively and a little bit sort of angrily, and I really am uneducated and I really am down to hear other people's sides to the story because at the end of the day I'm either going to agree or disagree but I'm going to probably learn something regardless so <clears throat> I'm down for that also uh, don't rob a jewelry store because you might die yeah food for thought that should be fucking I, I don't know what it is like I don't it's weird that that's like like creative advice right now like that's like advice oh damn dude if you rob a jewelry store you might die oh dude thanks Thank you, dude. Wow. Man, to have a good day. Happy New Year's. Like, right? oh, I owe you one. Pay it forward. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Anyways, um, stay tuned for the post show. Uh, if you guys want to watch this, if you didn't catch it live, you can always watch it on YouTube and also an app called Podbean. All you have to do is type in Stop Crying Pose or whatever. It comes out on Sunday around 7 a.m. Pacific Time. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Black Ninja LV. I would also advise you guys, if possible, please watch these reruns. Uh, if you didn't catch the, sh the live show, watch them on YouTube because most of them get just about 900 views and we need those to all get to about 1,000 so that I can make some money, 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 so that I can make some more money. The more money I make, the more stickers you can get, right? That sounds fair. That's fair to me. You guys don't want me out there fucking robbing jewelry stores. In order to eat Outback, right? So help me. Help you. Uh, let's see if anyone donated or whatever. We did get a couple of follows. Kurjarochi, we got Rochalo, and Varial Reality donated two cents. So we made two cents. I sat here on this podcast for, what, about, about an hour straight, and I made two cents. So if that, uh, if that doesn't make you guys feel bad... If, it, if that doesn't make you feel like spending some Christmas money on your good old Uncle Steve, good old Uncle Ninja, then uh, then maybe reevaluate your motherfucking life. Thank you guys for hanging out. I thought we had a great show. Let me know in the comments. Out of 10, I feel like this was a solid 8.5, maybe even a 9 out of 10 on the podcast scale. I will see you guys next time. Be on the lookout for fun videos, uh, Ninja Review, 
uh, cooking with Ninja, all kind of fun shit. And I will see you guys next time. Kuna, Matata, bitches. Let's play that motherfucking intro. God damn it, motherfucker. What?